So looking, so um, fortunately, at one moment, somewhere along the line, the information came through to me that there was no more hope of pretense. I was drinking, I knew I was in trouble, I wanted to quit, I couldn't quit. I didn't know that I couldn't drink at all safely. I thought if I, if I could find a way to drink just a little bit, I'd be all right. And in fact, I'm sure of that to this day. <laughs> but I'm also sure that I cannot drink just a little bit. And I finally got it that I had no such option. Somewhere along the line, it finally sunk in, not only that I couldn't drink safely, which I knew, but that there was no pretense, no way to pretend to you or me that there was a chance of a pretense of drinking safely. And somehow that got through to me. And I was able to turn and make some requests. Well, do you I understand? You understand? I understand. And go find the help I needed. And what I found was a bunch of people who had been there before me and who gathered together were able to keep each other sober and in whose care I could stay sober. So it turns out that for starters and substantially to this day, my higher power is my community. And I get this from every religious tradition I look at, that the community is a critical aspect of of the of recovery, whether you're recovering or just trying to get better. Um, one of the things in the uh, Celebrate Recovery thing is, you know, I can't help behaving badly sometimes, and I go, that's me. <laughs> and that I have to let go of my own will on this matter and turn to a community. It doesn't say that in the steps, the eight steps of recovery or the 12 step of uh, celebrate or the 12 steps of the anonymous systems. It doesn't say turn it over to your community, but everybody I know who's come through recovery has at one time or another said, thank God for you people. If it hadn't been for my group, I couldn't have done this. So we find, and, and for those of you who have a very specific higher power, namely the uh, Judeo-Christian God of Abraham, Isaac, and who's the other guy? Um, the, the, the biblical God, and more sometimes more specifically Jesus Christ, um, that, I, I don't believe you get there without going through people. I don't believe it. This is again. This is just me. But I and I think and what's worse for alcoholics and other compulsive behave, behaviors is that the community has to be more distilled than usual. Non-alcoholics can maybe can get it from the Lions Club meetings. I don't know. I though, but you know, go to a Lions Club or an Elf Club meeting and it's all about hey, how you doing, fella? <laughs> I'm in trouble. Have a drink. <laughs> which didn't work for me under the circumstances, as you can readily see. So, um, so I got a community, and with a community who had been through ahead of me what it was I needed to go through, I was able to give up my will. So it was no longer a matter of, man, what willpower you got? You haven't had a drink in 28 years. How, how do you do it, man? If I had your willpower, I'd... Nah, uh, 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 it's not having the willpower, it's giving up the willpower, it's surrendering, hopefully, to a dedicated community, for starters, that, for me, a dedicated community, that enabled me to begin the slow process of dealing with all the stuff that I drank about in the first place. Which is all the ways that I had, you know, because I felt like I was a, I knew I was a runner away, I'd run away all the time. And that made me a cheat. And since I knew it was a cheat, I cheated you. Vicious cycle. I cheat you, so, and then I run, and that makes me, and I know I'm a cheat, so it doesn't matter whether I cheat, because that doesn't change anything, so I cheat and I run, and I cheat and I run. Everything. Relationships. I was pretty good with cash register honesty. I learned that at my father's knee, but almost every emotional honesty available to me was not available to me. And I, you know, and I'll tell you the truth, folks. Twenty-eight years later, uh, the, that emotional recovery, emotional honesty, the, the emotional, uh, the honesty at depth 
is right now my biggest challenge. I eat, I ain't got it yet. It is better than it ever was. And I'm beginning to, I, I feel like I'm rounding a corner. Of course I've been feeling that for 28 years. <laughs> but it feels like I'm getting better. And I know I am. It's my the quality of my friendships is, is richer and deeper and stronger. My friends are more important in my life and I'm more important in my friends' lives. And uh, the, uh, uh, I am able to hear when somebody says, is that exactly what you had in mind right there? Is that a perfectly honest? I go, uh, well, maybe not. I think I can probably do better than that. And work on it. In other words, because I have what I can rely upon, uh, I am able to get better. Getting better enables me to stay sober. Staying sober enables me to get better. And that cycle, which was a vicious cycle before, is now a benign cycle. And it's taking me to some really wonderful places. And I recommend it for you. And uh, thank you for letting me carry on like this.